After a decade of navigating the corporate labyrinth, I finally broke free. My transformation into a technical consultant wasn't just a career change, it was an escape into a world where I could leverage my skills on my own terms. No longer a cog in the machine, I was now the architect of my destiny. The initial years were a frantic scramble for business, but as my reputation grew, the tables turned. Now I find myself in the enviable position of having work seek me out, filling my schedule to a comfortable half-time. This newfound freedom has allowed me to indulge in hobbies that were previously squeezed into the margins of my life. One such passion is hunting for treasures in antique shops and flea markets. Known in the trade as a picker, I specialize in niche collectibles, particularly old weapons. Not the kind that discharge bullets, but those with a more personal touch. Knives, swords, and artisan-crafted items like powder horns. While I don't earn a fortune from this endeavor, the thrill of the hunt and the cash-in-hand transactions make it a lucrative and enjoyable pastime. My personal collection is a testament to the artistry of weaponry. I have a penchant for shawl, saps, and brass knuckles, items that harken back to a bygone era of craftsmanship. These aren't your run-of-the-mill, mass-produced items. They're works of art, each telling a story of its creator and its time. Parallel to my adventures in antiquing, my wife continues her journey in the corporate world, albeit with less enthusiasm. Her job as an accountant provides stability, but it's the camaraderie with her colleagues that truly enriches her experience. Over the years, I've become acquainted with many of them, sharing in the ups and downs of office life through dinner conversations that often revolve around the latest managerial mandates. Our peaceful existence was recently shaken by the arrival of a new manager, Marcus Wolf. His introduction to our nightly discussions was unremarkable at first, but it wasn't long before his name became synonymous with hope for a better future at my wife's firm. However, my skepticism about new management led to an unexpected confrontation, revealing an emotional investment in Wolf's success that I hadn't anticipated from my wife. The resulting argument was a stark reminder of the complexities of work and relationships and the unpredictable impact of change on both. The discord sown by Marcus Wolf's arrival and my subsequent ill-received commentary on managerial tactics soon settled into an uneasy silence on the subject. My wife's fervor for Wolf's leadership cooled, or at least she chose to stifle it in our conversations. This detente was abruptly shattered by a late-night call that plunged us into a situation far removed from our mundane squabbles over dinner conversation. Julia, my wife's best friend, was on the other end of the line, her voice thick with panic. Her husband Austin had been brutally assaulted right on their doorstep. Despite his injuries, Austin's stubborn refusal of police involvement baffled us. Urgency propelled us into the night, rushing to their aid. Upon our arrival, the gravity of the situation became clear. Austin, a man just returning from his shift, was found in agonizing pain, his injuries suggesting a targeted attack rather than a random act of violence. His reluctance to seek medical help hinted at a complex web of secrets and possibly shame. In the quiet moments of waiting for the ambulance, a whispered exchange revealed that more than physical harm had been inflicted. A symbolic message had been delivered through the theft of his wedding ring. This act, leaving behind valuables while stripping him of his marital symbol, pointed towards a personal vendetta, possibly rooted in marital infidelity. The speculation about the assailant's identity and motive widened the rift in our once peaceful existence. Theories abounded, each more disturbing than the last, implicating family members, imagined lovers, and unknown rivals. This incident peeled back the layers of tranquility in our lives, exposing the fragile nature of trust and the destructive potential of secrets. As we navigated the aftermath of Austin's attack, the incident became a dark mirror reflecting the unseen tensions in our own lives. The questions it raised about loyalty, trust, and the consequences of our actions lingered, casting long shadows over our conversations and the unspoken thoughts between us. In the following days, the shadow of Marcus Wolf and the turmoil at my wife's workplace seemed trivial in comparison to the real-life drama unfolding around us. Yet, these events were merely the prelude to a deeper, more personal upheaval that was about to challenge the foundations of our marriage and our understanding of each other. As the dust settled from the unsettling events surrounding Austin's assault, 
life's rhythm slowly resumed its usual pace, albeit with an undercurrent of unease that neither my wife nor I could shake off entirely. This fragile normalcy was once again disrupted, this time by a seemingly innocuous query about Marcus Wolf. My wife's reaction, or rather the lack thereof, to my inquiries about Wolf signaled a change. The once fervent discussions about his impact on the office had vanished, replaced by a deliberate silence that spoke volumes. This change coincided with a revelation that shifted the ground beneath me. The casual mention of Wolf at dinner, intended as a peace offering of sorts, was met not with the anticipated discussion, but with a stark admission of deliberate silence from my wife. This admission, cloaked in the guise of consideration for my feelings, hinted at a complexity in their relationship that I had not considered. The ensuing conversation laid bare the unspoken truths that had crept into the crevices of our marriage. Accusations and defenses flew, blurring the lines between trust, transparency, and the autonomy of individual relationships outside our union. The debate veered into the realm of what constitutes fidelity not just in action, but in thought and in the unguarded moments of connection with others. The tension culminated in a stark ultimatum from my wife, suggesting that the very foundation of our marriage was under scrutiny. Her words, a mixture of defiance and vulnerability, forced me to confront the possibility that my fears and insecurities might have driven a wedge deeper than any third party ever could. In the wake of this confrontation, I stumbled upon an uncomfortable truth that forced me to question not just my wife's fidelity, but the very nature of trust itself. An inadvertently left open email account revealed a pattern of lunches with Wolf that, while not explicitly inappropriate, hinted at a closeness I had been unaware of. This discovery, made in the shadow of our recent argument, felt like a betrayal, not just of our vows, but of the open and honest dialogue I had believed was the cornerstone of our marriage. The revelation set me on a path that I could never have anticipated. Driven by a concoction of betrayal, hurt, and a desperate need for clarity, I found myself adopting the unlikely role of a spy in my own life. Disguised and armed with the primitive weapon of a sap, I set out to confront the truth of my wife's relationship with Wolf in the most direct manner possible. The confrontation, however, took an unexpected turn. Instead of the cathartic clash I had envisioned, I found myself a silent witness to an intimate moment that confirmed my worst fears. The intimacy shared between my wife and Wolf, observed from the shadows of my disguise, was a visceral blow that shattered any remaining illusions of trust and fidelity. In the aftermath of this discovery, I was left to navigate a storm of emotions that ranged from righteous indignation to profound sorrow. The act of violence that ensued, born out of a primal desire for retribution, was as shocking to me as the betrayal itself. The man I became in that moment, capable of cold, calculated violence, was a stranger, propelled by a sense of justice that blurred the lines between right and wrong. As I emerged from the hotel, the weight of my actions and their potential consequences bore down on me. The realization that I had irrevocably altered the course of multiple lives, including my own, was a sobering thought that offered no comfort. The path forward was uncertain, shadowed by the specter of legal retribution and the dissolution of my marriage. Yet in the depths of this turmoil, a resolve took shape, a determination to confront the fallout of my actions head-on, regardless of the cost. The immediate aftermath of my actions left me in a state of surreal detachment. As I made my way home, the gravity of what I had done, and what it implied about the state of my marriage, weighed heavily on me. Yet there was also a perverse sense of justice that clouded my judgment, convincing me that my violent retribution was a necessary act to reclaim some semblance of dignity. Upon my return, the practical considerations of what had transpired began to take shape. The decision to confront my wife was inevitable. Yet how to approach this confrontation was fraught with uncertainty. The physical evidence of my actions, a disguise now discarded, a weapon hidden away, felt like artifacts from another life, one I was still struggling to reconcile with the man I believed myself to be. The confrontation with my wife unfolded in an unexpected manner. Her own state, physically marred by an unrelated incident that left her in considerable pain, added a layer of complexity to our exchange. 
Her injuries, while not a direct result of our personal turmoil, seemed almost symbolic of the deeper wounds our marriage had sustained. As I navigated this delicate conversation, the truth of our respective deceptions came to light. The revelation that my wife's interaction with Marcus Wolf was far more innocent than I had assumed only deepened the sense of betrayal. The real affair, it emerged, was with someone else entirely, Jonathan Lamb, a revelation that twisted the knife of betrayal even further. The ensuing dialogue between us was a raw exposition of our marriage's fractures. Accusations and denials gave way to a more profound acknowledgement of our mutual failures. My own actions, once justified in my mind as a response to betrayal, now seemed a grotesque overreaction, a mirror reflecting the darkest parts of myself I had refused to acknowledge. The fallout from this confrontation was immediate and irreversible. The decision to end our marriage, while mutual in theory, was driven by a recognition that the trust and respect foundational to our relationship had been irrevocably damaged. This decision, painful as it was, seemed the only viable path forward from the wreckage of our shared lives. In the days that followed, the practicalities of dissolving our marriage, dividing assets, negotiating the terms of our separation, were handled with a business-like efficiency that belied the emotional turmoil beneath. Yet even as we navigated these steps, there was an unspoken acknowledgement between us of the love and history that had once bound us together. The finality of our separation was a stark reminder of the transient nature of relationships and the fragility of trust. As I embarked on this new chapter of my life, the lessons of my marriage and its demise loomed large. The realization that love, once unassailable, can be undone by a confluence of mistrust, miscommunication, and misguided actions was a sobering truth I could no longer ignore. In the end, the journey through the ruins of my marriage was a painful yet illuminating path to self-discovery. The man who emerged from this ordeal was far different from the one who had entered it, shaped by the scars of his experiences, but also by a newfound understanding of the complexities of love, loyalty, and forgiveness. The dissolution of our marriage, while a decision made in the clarity of betrayal and hurt, did not mark an immediate severance of our lives. In the weeks that followed, as the dust of our confrontation settled, there was a gradual, painful unwinding of the life we had built together. This process, marked by moments of unexpected kindness amidst the bitterness of separation, served as a poignant reminder of the complexity of human emotions. In this time of transition, I found myself reflecting on the choices that had led us to this juncture. The introspection was uncomfortable, forcing me to confront not only my wife's infidelities, but also the ways in which my own actions and insecurities had contributed to the erosion of our relationship. This period of self-examination was a humbling experience, challenging my perceptions of right and wrong, and prompting me to question the nature of forgiveness and accountability. As we navigated the logistics of separation, splitting possessions, finding new living arrangements, there was an undercurrent of mutual regret. Despite the hurt that lay between us, there were moments of shared reminiscence, brief flashes of the intimacy and partnership that had once defined our relationship. These instances, though fleeting, underscored the tragedy of love lost, not through diminishing affection, but through a series of missteps and misunderstandings that had compounded over time. The finality of signing the divorce papers brought with it a profound sense of loss, it was a stark acknowledgement that the chapter of our lives we had written together was closing, leaving behind a narrative of what might have been. This act, though necessary, felt like an admission of defeat, a concession that despite our best intentions, we had failed each other in irreparable ways. In the aftermath of our divorce, I embarked on a period of solitude. This time alone was not just an escape from the pain of the past, but an opportunity to rediscover who I was outside the context of our marriage. The journey was not easy. It was marked by periods of loneliness and introspection that forced me to confront uncomfortable truths about myself and the role I had played in the unraveling of our relationship. Yet, it was in this space of reflection that I began to find a sense of peace. Gradually, I came to understand that forgiveness, both of myself and my ex-wife, was the key to moving forward. This realization did not come all at once, but rather as a slow dawning that illuminated the path to healing. 
Forgiveness, I learned, was not an absolution of our actions, but an acceptance of our shared humanity, flawed and susceptible to mistakes. As I emerged from this period of introspection, I found that my perspectives on love and trust had evolved. The experience of my marriage and its demise had taught me that trust, once broken, is not easily mended, but it is not beyond repair. Love, in its truest form, requires not just passion and commitment, but a willingness to face and forgive the imperfections within ourselves and our partners. This newfound understanding did not erase the scars of the past, but it offered a foundation for rebuilding, a chance to approach future relationships with a deeper sense of compassion and empathy. As I stepped into this new chapter of my life, I carried with me the lessons of my marriage, a reminder of the fragile beauty of love and the strength to be found in forgiveness. In the aftermath of healing and reflection, life began to take on a new rhythm, one marked by a sense of renewal and cautious optimism. The lessons of my past, while hard-earned, had instilled in me a resilience and a deeper understanding of my own values and desires. This period of personal growth led me to explore new interests and rekindle old passions, filling my life with activities that brought me joy and a sense of fulfillment that had been missing in the latter years of my marriage. It was during this time of exploration and self-discovery that I encountered a community of individuals who shared my interest in history and antique weaponry. This connection, initially forged through a shared hobby, soon grew into a network of friendships that provided not only companionship, but also a sense of belonging. These new relationships, built on mutual respect and shared passions, were a stark contrast to the superficial connections that had characterized my social life in recent years. As I immersed myself further into this community, I found that my expertise and enthusiasm for historical weapons were not only valued, but sought after. This recognition led to opportunities to contribute to exhibitions and write articles for collectors' publications, turning a hobby that had once been a solitary pursuit into a shared passion that connected me to a wider world. The fulfillment I found in these endeavors was complemented by a newfound openness in my personal life. Encouraged by my experiences of growth and change, I began to approach relationships with a greater sense of clarity and intention. This shift in perspective led me to meet someone who, unlike anyone I had known before, challenged and complimented me in equal measure. Our relationship, built on a foundation of mutual respect and shared values, was a testament to the possibility of finding love after loss. Unlike the tumultuous beginnings of my previous marriage, this connection was characterized by open communication and a deep understanding of each other's needs and boundaries. The ease with which we navigated our relationship was a constant reminder of how much I had grown and of the importance of applying the lessons of the past to the present. As our relationship deepened, I found myself reflecting on the journey that had led me to this point. The pain and betrayal that had once seemed insurmountable were now distant memories, transformed by time and the work of forgiveness into lessons that had shaped the person I had become. This process of transformation was not without its challenges, but it had taught me that even the deepest wounds could heal, and that from the ashes of a broken past, a new and hopeful future could emerge. In this new chapter of my life, I found not only love but also a sense of purpose and fulfillment that extended beyond my personal relationships. My involvement in the community of collectors and historians had grown into a vocation that brought me not just financial stability, but also a sense of contributing to something larger than myself. This work, once a source of solitary enjoyment, had become a means of connecting with others and sharing the stories that had captivated me for so long. The journey from the depths of despair to a place of hope and renewal was a testament to the capacity for change and the resilience of the human spirit. As I looked to the future, I did so with a sense of gratitude for the lessons of the past and a newfound confidence in my ability to navigate whatever challenges lay ahead. The road to this point had been long and winding, marked by moments of darkness and light, but it had led me to a place of greater understanding and peace. In this new beginning, I found not just the promise of happiness, but also the strength to embrace it fully, secure in the knowledge that from the most challenging experiences, the most profound growth can emerge.
This newfound happiness and sense of purpose did not mean the path was always clear or easy. Challenges, both expected and unforeseen, continued to surface, testing the strength of my relationships and my commitment to my newfound path. However, the resilience and insight gained from past experiences equipped me to navigate these obstacles with a grace and understanding that I once lacked. One such challenge emerged in the form of balancing my professional ambitions with the demands of my personal life. The recognition and opportunities that came with my contributions to the antique weaponry community were both exhilarating and demanding. As invitations to speak at conferences and participate in exhibitions increased, so too did the strain on my time and energy. The lessons of the past, however, reminded me of the importance of maintaining a balance, of not allowing one aspect of life to overshadow the others. In navigating these demands, communication and compromise became the bedrock of my relationship. Together, we found ways to support each other's goals and passions while ensuring that our connection remained a priority. This mutual support fostered a deeper bond between us, transforming challenges into opportunities for growth and strengthening our partnership. Another test came from within the community I had grown to cherish. Disagreements and conflicts, while rare, did arise, challenging the harmony of our shared endeavors. These moments required a delicate balance of diplomacy and integrity as I sought to mediate disputes while staying true to my principles. The experience of rebuilding my life had taught me the value of empathy and understanding, allowing me to navigate these situations with a perspective that prioritized collective harmony over individual victory. As time passed, the relationship that had blossomed in the aftermath of my divorce matured into a partnership defined by mutual respect, shared laughter, and an unwavering support for one another's dreams. The decision to marry again was one that we approached with intention and joy, fully aware of the challenges that marriage can bring but confident in the foundation we had built together. The wedding, a celebration of our journey and the future we envisioned, was a testament to the power of second chances. Surrounded by friends, family, and members of the community that had become an integral part of our lives, we exchanged vows that spoke not only of love, but of gratitude for the lessons learned and the growth experienced. In this new marriage, the shadows of the past served not as specters of fear, but as reminders of the capacity for change and the possibility of redemption. We understood that love, in its truest form, is not a state of perpetual bliss, but a choice made daily, a commitment to face life's challenges together with courage and kindness. As I reflect on the journey that led me to this moment, I am struck by the unpredictability of life's path. The pain and loss that once seemed insurmountable were, in fact, the catalysts for profound personal growth and the discovery of a deeper, more enduring love. This realization fills me with a sense of wonder and gratitude, a recognition of the intricate tapestry of experiences that shape our lives. Looking ahead, I am filled with a sense of optimism and curiosity for what the future holds. The road may not always be smooth, but the trials and triumphs of the past have equipped me with the strength, wisdom, and flexibility to navigate whatever comes my way. In this next chapter of my life, I carry with me the lessons of resilience, the importance of forgiveness, and the transformative power of love. Principles that will guide me through the joys and challenges that lie ahead. In the end, the journey from the depths of despair to a place of hope and renewal is not a journey that one takes alone. It is a path forged through the connections we make, the love we share, and the wisdom we gain from each and every experience. As I look to the future, I do so with an open heart and a spirit ready to embrace the infinite possibilities that life offers, knowing that from the most profound challenges, the most beautiful chapters of our lives can begin. Life in its unending complexity, continued to unfold in ways both expected and surprising. The tranquil periods of joy and contentment were occasionally punctuated by storms, challenges that tested our resilience, our love, and our capacity for growth. Yet, it was within these trials that the depth of our commitment and the strength of our bond were truly revealed. Each obstacle navigated, each conflict resolved, served not to weaken, but to fortify the foundation upon which our lives were built. The world around us, ever-changing, presented its own set of challenges. 
The shifting landscapes of politics, society, and technology influenced not just the broader context of our lives, but the intimate spaces of our daily existence. We found ourselves navigating discussions that tested our understanding and tolerance, pushing us to expand our perspectives and grow together. These conversations, though sometimes difficult, enriched our relationship, embedding within it a dynamic resilience that thrived on mutual respect and the willingness to learn from one another. Our careers, too, evolved in unexpected ways. My involvement in the antique weaponry community, once a source of personal fulfillment and professional recognition, began to take on new dimensions. Collaborations with historians, museums, and educational institutions opened avenues for sharing the knowledge and passion that had long fueled my work. These opportunities, while rewarding, also demanded a recalibration of our lives as we sought to balance these new endeavors with the needs and rhythms of our family life. Family, the cornerstone of our shared journey, brought with it its own joys and sorrows. The expansion of our family, marked by milestones and moments of profound happiness, also brought new challenges. Parenthood, with all its wonders and worries, tested us in ways we could never have anticipated. It demanded of us a depth of patience, understanding, and unconditional love that transformed us, shaping us into individuals capable of greater empathy and compassion. As our children grew, their own journeys became interwoven with ours, each milestone a reflection of the passage of time and the fleeting nature of life itself. Their successes and setbacks, their dreams and doubts, became shared experiences that further bonded our family. Through them, we relived our own youth, confronted our fears and celebrated our triumphs, all the while marveling at the unique individuals they were becoming. The passage of time brought with it a poignant awareness of the impermanence of life. We faced the loss of loved ones, moments that reminded us of the fragility of existence and the importance of cherishing every moment. These losses, though heart-rending, also served as reminders of the enduring power of love and the legacy we leave through the lives we touch. They taught us to hold tight to the memories, to find solace in the love that outlasts physical presence, and to carry forward the lessons and love of those who have passed. As we navigated the ebb and flow of life, our relationship remained a harbor of stability and strength. The challenges we faced together only deepened our appreciation for the moments of quiet joy that life offered. A shared glance that spoke volumes, the warmth of a hand in ours, the comfort of a shared silence. These simple, everyday moments became the threads that wove the tapestry of our shared life, a tapestry rich with the colors of love, resilience, and shared growth. Looking back on the journey that led us to this point, I am filled with a deep sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the love that has guided us through the storms, for the lessons learned in the shadows of sorrow, and for the joy found in the simplest of moments. Our journey, marked by both the scars of struggle and the light of love, stands as a testament to the capacity of the human heart to heal, to love deeply, and to find hope in the face of adversity. As we look to the future, we do so with the knowledge that whatever challenges lie ahead, we will face them together, with open hearts and a steadfast commitment to support one another. The journey continues, a journey of love, learning, and growth, a journey we are grateful to share. And in this journey, we find our greatest strength, the love that binds us, guiding us forward into the unknown with courage, hope, and an unwavering faith in the promise of tomorrow. As the sun sets on the horizon of our shared journey, painting the sky with hues of gold, orange, and purple, a moment of reflection encapsulates the essence of our journey together. It's a quiet acknowledgement of the years that have passed, marked by both trials and triumphs, and a recognition of the unwavering bond that has been our anchor through the vicissitudes of life. This journey, rich with the tapestry of experiences woven from our joys, sorrows, challenges, and victories, has been a testament to the enduring power of love. A love that has matured and deepened with the passage of time, becoming more resilient and profound with each obstacle overcome and each dream pursued together. It is this love that has transformed us, guiding us through life's complexities with grace and fortitude. In the twilight of our years, as we walk hand in hand, 
there is a sense of fulfillment that comes not from the milestones achieved or the challenges conquered, but from the simple, unspoken understanding that we have lived our lives true to ourselves and to each other. The laughter shared, the tears shed, the silent moments of connection. These are the true markers of our journey together, the indelible memories that will remain long after the sun has set. Our children, now grown and embarking on their own journeys, stand as the living legacies of our love. In them, we see reflections of our shared values, our hopes, and our dreams. Their successes and struggles are their own, yet in their resilience, their compassion, and their pursuit of happiness, we find echoes of our journey together. It is in their laughter, their love, and their courage that our greatest achievements are realized. A reminder that the true measure of our lives lies in the impact we have on those we love. As we gaze into the future, the path ahead is illuminated by the wisdom gained from the past. We understand now more than ever that life is a mosaic of moments, some radiant with joy, others shadowed by sorrow. Yet each moment is precious, a gift to be cherished and embraced. Our journey has taught us to live fully in the present, to savor the beauty of the ordinary, and to find strength in the love that binds us. In this final chapter of our journey, as we stand on the threshold of the unknown, we do so with hearts full of gratitude. Gratitude for the love that has been our compass, for the lessons that have shaped our souls, and for the moments that have filled our lives with meaning. We look to the future not with trepidation, but with a quiet confidence, knowing that whatever it may hold, we will face it together, with love as our guiding light. And so, as the final page turns and the story of our journey together draws to a close, we hold tight to the memories, to the love that has sustained us, and to the promise of each new dawn. Our journey may be coming to an end, but the love we share, eternal and unyielding, will continue to shine, a beacon of hope, resilience, and enduring joy. This is not the end, but a new beginning, a passage into the next chapter of our lives where the legacy of our love will live on in the hearts of those we have touched. In the quiet moments, in the echoes of laughter, in the warmth of shared memories, our journey will continue, a never-ending testament to the power of love to transcend time and space. With hands clasped and hearts intertwined, we step forward into the twilight, guided by the stars of our past and the light of our love, ready to embrace the mystery of what lies beyond. Together, we move into the future, leaving behind a trail of light for others to follow, a legacy of love that will endure forever. And in this moment of parting, we understand that love, in its essence, is the greatest journey of all, a journey that knows no end.